If you own one of these lovely Mercedes R230s or you're thinking of buying one, one thing you should be aware of is that the battery control module in this car can under certain conditions melt and disable your car in the best case scenario or worst case scenario catch fire and actually set fire to your car. When I first heard about these cars catching fire I was a little bit skeptical but I have to say I'm seeing an increasing number of R230s especially the early ones coming up for auction in salvage yards with burn damage or fire damage so in this video here I am going to be cutting a hole in my car my pristine sl55 low mileage one owner from new and fitting an inspection hatch which has just been developed and produced by these guys here the sl guys now i could be completely wrong but i am seeing an increasing number of these r230 sls appearing at copart salvage auctions with burn damage for example at the time of writing this in the UK, there were three cars listed and two out of the three have burn damage. Now, obviously the burn damage could be for some other reason, but I suspect the burn damage is to do with the battery control module. And what you'll see is a lot of these earlier cars, 2003, four and five, are appearing in Copart now with burn damage. And part of the reason is because those battery control modules have electrolyte capacitors in them that can degrade over time. And the other reason is, as the price of these cars comes down and down and down, they're in the hands of more and more people who don't necessarily service them and who don't necessarily know how to recharge batteries, how to check for battery drains, etc. So if we have a look at these two cars here first, what you'll see is... First of all, the car doesn't run. Once the battery control module um, is fried, the car won't start. But if we go into additional information here, you'll see unable to open boot. And once the rear consumer battery is no longer working or is flat, the boot won't open unless you happen to know that in the key fob, there is a blade key, which is removable. And underneath the boot star is a small lock just here where you can insert the key and open the boot. And if you own one of these SLs, one thing I would urge you to do is to remove the blade key from your key fob and check that it actually unlocks each of your lock because my SL55, which has one careful owner from new, a friend of mine, the blade key didn't work in the door when I got it and I didn't find that out till I accidentally locked the keys in the car and the battery went flat and I couldn't open it. So just check that the blade key actually opens the boot. If you're thinking of buying one of these cars and you wonder why it's a non-runner or you see burn damage, you'll often see A, that the boot is unable to open. You may even see some kind of evidence of fire damage. So for example, on this car here, this is the back of the car here, you can see these black marks here is smoke damage. Now, if the only thing that's happened is the battery control module has overheated and started smoking and has fried one of the components inside, you would be able to replace the battery control module and the car would run absolutely fine. If, on the other hand, that battery control module has actually caught fire and melted the wiring loom or damaged the interior trim, then probably this car is just going to be a parts car from here on out. You don't have to cut a hole in the boot lining of your car to gain access to the battery control module. You can take out all the rear trim and I've done a very detailed video showing you how to do that and there'll be a link to that video in the description. But to do that, even if you know what you're doing, will take you at least 20 minutes and the chance of you breaking some of the plastic trim is extremely high. So. An inspection hatch will allow you to easily periodically inspect your BCM or battery control module for signs of burning. And if there is any sign of burning or you're in any way concerned, the same guys have produced a replacement for the um, battery control module. And I'll be doing a separate video on how to fit that unit. It's pretty much a plug and play. And once this panel is in place, the job will be a million times easier. The first thing I'm going to do is just slide back this little lever here and take out the blade key and just make sure it fits the trunk or the boot lock. Now, if you haven't already done that, made sure that this blade key fits both the boot lock and the door locks, I would suggest you do so. 
um, if your battery consumer battery does ever go flat and you can't unlock the boot you'll have to end up either smashing this back light cutting a hole behind the number plate all sorts of other things so make sure that your blade key works the blade key fits in a lock just below the Mercedes star like that and turns anti-clockwise to open the boot and then you just pull the handle towards you and that boot will open once you've opened the boot or the trunk, the battery control module sits behind this piece of trim in there. And when you buy this inspection hatch here, it comes with a handy template that you draw around with a felt tip pen so you know exactly where to cut the hole. My advice before you start cutting any holes is that to actually disconnect the rear battery just in case you end up nicking any of the wires. If you're lucky enough to have an original car, it comes with a toolkit, and in the toolkit you'll find a spanner to undo the negative terminal of the battery. While you're in here, make sure that your car has the correct type of consumer battery in it. It should be an AGM battery. Do not be tempted to put a lead acid battery in there because the charging profile of an AGM battery is completely different to a lead acid battery. And the last thing you want to be doing is putting additional stress on your battery control module because you've got the wrong type of battery in there. Once you disconnect the battery, the boot lock will no longer work or the door locks will no longer work. So if you want to be super safe and disconnect the starter battery in the front of the car as well, you need to open the bonnet of the car before you disconnect the consumer battery. If you don't go fishing around in the boot or trunk of your car very often, it's a good time to check that it's all dry in here, that this sponge here is completely dry and there's no moisture surrounding the PSE pump here because another common problem with these cars is they leak water in through these rear seals here um, and then that pump there, the, the connections start to get corroded and then the boot won't work and various other things stop working. So while you're in here, just check that out. If you cut the hole correctly, the idea will be that this panel would fit in there snugly. It comes in two colours, grey and black. We've got a grey interior here and it'll look pretty much OEM once you've fitted it, if you cut the hole correctly. If you're in any uh, doubt that you're going to cut through wires or anything like that, take the boot lining out and do it out of the car. And as I say, there is a little a link to a video on my site which shows you how to do that. When you cut the template, make sure this is aligned properly because the actual panel here has this kink in it which basically means that this bottom part of this template here is actually going to be bent slightly when you draw around it. There we go I've just used a brand new sharpie to draw around that I'm not sure if that's the perfect line or cut but we will soon find out. Start cutting at the top because think there's a gap at the top and the side and then at the bottom there's more chance of cutting into something you don't want to cut into. Let's just have a quick look inside there and see. You can see that we're nowhere near any wires at this stage which is good. When you're cutting down this final edge here, you need to be very careful because you can see the tip of the blade there, how close it is to those wires. So I'm just gonna slip something in there, a little piece of wood or metal, just to make sure there's no chance of me nicking those wires. We've avoided cutting any of the wires. You do have to be quite careful just here and also along the bottom that you don't slice into these wires, but we've avoided all of that. You can see around the top here, there are no wires close. There is one wire on this side here that you should probably be aware of as well. Um, 
it just remains to be seen whether this actually fits and the way to fit it is that the hinges there will slot in first like so and then using the handy latching mechanism that should just latch shut which it does giving it a nice neat finished appearance. Once you have the inspection hatch obviously you can then periodically check your battery control module for any signs of charring. Now the battery control module itself just plugs in here and here and then is held in with four bolts. Dead easy to get out and then you just need a couple of Torx um, screws, four Torx screws to actually take the top off so you can have a look inside and make sure there's no signs of burning and charring. Now if there are signs of burning and charring the same guys who produce this, the SL guys, have also produced a replacement for this, a module that will fit in here, basically a plug and play that will get your car up and running and avoid burning it to the ground. It's not a direct replacement and I'll be doing a separate video on how to remove the BCM and how to swap it over. But um, a big shout out to these guys here. This is not a professional organization with a big factory or anything like that. It's basically a couple of guys who've set out to save SLs and basically address this BCM problem. So a huge shout out to them and I will give you the link in the description of how to contact these guys and get one of these panels and also potentially order a replacement BCM. I'm gonna leave this video here. I hope you'll agree that that little inspection hatch is one addition which is worthwhile taking with your R230. Now next week, I'm gonna be introducing you to a guy called Mark and we're gonna be doing an ABC fluid change on this car because one of the expensive things that can go wrong with these cars is the ABC, the active body control um, hydraulic suspension. And one of the reasons that that active body control suspension goes wrong or fails prematurely is that people do not change the hydraulic fluid often enough. So I'm going to be showing you in detail how to do that and what it costs and what tools you need, etc.